Every year on graduation Sunday, it takes me right back to 1986 when I graduated from high school. I ought to be young again. Um, I, I was about to cross the country to go to college. Uh, I did not know anyone where I was going. Nobody knew me. All my life I'd been around my family and people who knew me and were familiar with me and and who I was. And all of a sudden I was going to be going off to meet complete strangers. And like the character in this morning's children's story, I wondered, what if I get lonely? What if I need help? What if no one likes me? What if they're mean to me? I remember I so much wanted to be liked and I so much wanted to belong. Have you ever wanted to belong to something so much that you were willing to give up something that's important to you in order to be accepted? Have you ever perhaps hidden a part of yourself in order to fit in or to be liked? Or am I the only one? I think we've all done it at some points in our life in different ways. And I'm reminded of the Cinderella story, not the sanitized Disney version of the story, but the original grim fairy tale. And it's pretty grim if you know it. In it, when the men come looking for this beautiful, mysterious woman that they can't find. And they've got the glass slipper in their hand and they, they go around the entire kingdom looking for the woman whose foot can fit into the slipper. And they enter Cinderella's home and first her first stepsister cuts off her toes to try to fit into the glass slipper. And her other stepsister cuts off her heel in order to try to fit in to the glass slipper. Imagine the pain of trying to jam your bloody severed (laughs) foot into a glass slipper. It hurts to cut off a part of ourselves in order to try to fit in, whether it's a slipper or a relationship or a job or just about anything. And when people do it, then we often try to anesthetize ourselves from the pain using drugs or alcohol or shopping or gambling or sex without love or any number of potential pain relievers. So it's better to just not cut off a part of ourselves, but be true to ourselves. You know, Emily Dickinson, the poet who we heard Jeannie Lee did such a beautiful job reciting in the choir, singing her poem earlier. She went to Mount Holyoke College when she was younger. And it was a time when in her home state of Massachusetts and throughout much of America at that point, it was awash in religious revivals. She lived in a community in the 19th century where they believed that a person had to have a direct personal experience of Jesus in order to be considered a member of the church. Having had such a spiritual conversion, as they called it, was considered the one and only sign that someone would be saved and would go to heaven. People were expected to testify to their personal experience of Jesus. There were at least eight religious revivals in her hometown of Amherst, Massachusetts during her formative years. But Emily Dickinson could never honestly testify to having experienced the spirit of Jesus in her soul. And this fact caused her much anguish as she watched her friends one by one confessing to their belief and experience of Christ as savior. There was a lot of pressure placed on everyone at this time to accept Jesus and to testify to some experience of Jesus coming alive inside your heart. And especially Emily 
who was the daughter of a prominent New England Congregationalist family. She was 16 years old when she entered Mount Holyoke. The school was run by Mary Lyon, who I've read placed each student in one of three categories. Those who had confessed their faith were known as professors of faith. Those who seemed close to doing so were known as hopers. And those who showed little or no desire to convert were termed no hopers. <laughs> you can imagine the social pressure to convert in such a system where everyone knew the label of everyone else, especially at such an impressionable age and stage in one's life. But Emily never converted. We're told that she left Mount Holyoke a no hoper. It makes her poem and that song even more meaningful. It's pretty amazing to realize that all she had to do to gain full acceptance by her teachers and her peers was to say that she believed. Even if she didn't, she could just say it in order to fit in, but she didn't. At 16 years old, she realized, had she compromised her integrity in exchange for social acceptance, it would be a kind of inner death. She would be ceasing to think for herself and would instead be following the crowd. In essence, she'd be giving up her truth to conform to popular opinion. And this is what can happen when we go off to college or even go to Japan. We either find our true selves like Cinderella, or we cut off parts of ourselves in hopes of fitting in like her sisters. It took incredible courage for Emily Dickinson to stay true to herself. But I believe it was her willingness to do so that allowed her to discover her genius. And she's left quite a legacy like no other American poet. But too many people today are just seem like they're just following the crowd, doing whatever they think others expect them to do. We see it in the politicians in Washington all the time. Every night on the evening news, it seems that we have to watch, and it's painful to watch, these grown men and women saying things that we know they don't believe in order to gain and retain power and approval. Graduates, we raised you differently. <laughs> now, we do not and did not tell you exactly what to believe, but we tell you be courageous about what it is that you do believe. Just know that it's not always easy to do it. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's not easy for any of us at any age or stage in our lives. Wherever the road takes you, to thine own self be true. Trust that as you live your truth, you give other people around you permission to live their truth. And that is the message that we want you to take with you as you go out wherever the road will lead you. And we, we promise in our own ways and in our own lives to do our best to not cut off any parts of ourselves, but to be fully, live fully into our truth. Because that's what the world needs more now than ever. In a time when truth has become so elusive, the world needs people who will live their own truth in the world. Thank you. God bless you, and congratulations to our graduates.